There was a peculiar hum in the air, a static whisper that seemed to slither its way into the living rooms of the quaint town of Midway Hollow. The Sampson family, a regular suburban unit, sat in the eerie illumination of their television screen, their normalcy disrupted by the unnatural hour of their vigil. A glance at the clock confirmed the time. It was 3.32 a.m. Tonight, like every other resident in the town, they'd surrendered their sleep to the mysterious siren call of an anarchistic television broadcast. At the stroke of 3.33 a.m., the screen flickered to life, relaying a visual symphony of destruction. It was a monstrous mix of crumbling buildings, torched landscapes, and shadowy figures spouting rebellion. The Sampsons watched with a growing unease as their once peaceful town was distorted into a dystopian nightmare. The familiar faces of their neighbors twisted in fear and confusion. Meanwhile, Noah, the town's self-proclaimed anarchist and teenage outcast, sat in his room, immune to the contagious fear. His usually defiant spirit felt oddly at odds with the collective hysteria. Dressed in a worn-out band t-shirt with the spirit of rebellion coursing through his veins, Noah decided it was time to pull back the curtain on this grim performance. His quest led him to the echoing loneliness of an old abandoned broadcasting station that featured prominently in the broadcasts. The station stood like a spectral monument, its vandalized windows staring back at Noah like vacant eye sockets. An inexplicable attraction tugged at Noah, resonating with the dissonant chords of his defiant spirit. Outside, the town was spiraling into chaos, with each prophecy from the broadcast materializing with uncanny precision. Fires consumed buildings, and even the town's mayor was uncovered as a corrupt puppet. A palpable panic had gripped Midway Hollow, yet Noah remained untouched by the madness, a lone island in a sea of tumultuous horror. Inside the forsaken broadcasting station, he navigated through the remnants of a bygone era. Amid the dust and forgotten memories, a solitary film machine loomed in the corner, a reel still attached as though waiting to narrate its tale. Nearby, a collection of film reels were stacked, each labeled with a date and time. Each label eerily coincided with the recent broadcasts. As Noah delved deeper into the station's forgotten treasures, the town outside was being consumed by paranoia. The broadcasts had shifted focus, predicting violent fates for specific individuals. The townsfolk were at the mercy of an unseen puppeteer with the late-night broadcasts acting as a macabre script. One night, as the broadcast commenced its grim parade of horrors, Noah decided to play one of the unearthed reels in the abandoned station. The images that danced on the antiquated screen mirrored the live broadcast in a chilling synchrony. He felt a cold realization creep up his spine. The broadcasts were not prophecies, but mere replays of forgotten broadcasts. Memories of his grandfather's tales of a forgotten period of anarchy in Midway Hollow began to gnaw at his mind. The broadcasting station had once been the town's beacon during those dark times. Its owner, an exiled revolutionary. The broadcasts were not predicting their doom, but retracing their sins. As the truth emerged, it dawned on Noah that the town was not enacting a future prophecy, but repeating the past. The image on the screen flickered again, revealing a young anarchist, an all-too-familiar reflection of Noah himself, singled out as the next victim. The broadcasts were not warnings, but a judgment. The past had returned not as a memory, but as a taskmaster, repeating itself in a grim cycle, with Noah as its unwilling protagonist. His immunity wasn't his salvation, it was his damnation, setting him up as the town's next sacrificial lamb in a relentless broadcast at 3.33 a.m. 